Fridays are here again. Brain Kitty Podcast, episode 356. Yes. Hi, Three, Sarah. Three, five, six. How are Hi, you? Sus. <laughs> I am doing really well. Oh, I'm doing super well because guess what's almost done? What? My house. Ooh, it's coming along. I have it almost all. If I just ignore the mess that's in the garage, because I haven't had my garage sale yet, so it's just full. Yeah. But I almost have, like, I did the hanging of the shelves. I wow. put up photos. I um, got print uh, pictures, ordered pictures to go in the frames. Like, you know, because you can't, well, I got to get new photos. Or yeah. I have our wedding photos on the wall. Right. <laughs> got to get new ones. It's such a production. Yeah, it really is. So I've also, along the way, been making little videos that I've been storing of like little sort of Instagram stories of how I do things, like hang a wall real easily. Really? And so get ready for those. Do you think people would like those? I do. I think yeah. people like seeing you be handy also, just in general. And they're like good tips, like how to hang a perfectly straight shelf using your lipstick as a guide. Wow. See, yes. yes, this is what we are all here for. Okay, good. I'm yeah, here for that. Yeah, that's really then. fun. Cool. I'm happy for you. So it's starting to feel like home? It's starting to feel like home. The one thing I'm missing is my TVs are getting hung uh, later this evening. Mm-hmm. And uh, the one thing I'm uh, missing is a table, like a dining table, which is... Oh. Yeah, but my dining table goes outside. Oh, right, right, right. Because I got that outdoor indoor thing going. So I yeah. don't have an indoor dining table. I just have an outdoor one, but I got to find a dining table. It feels weird. When we first to not spoke have one. today, you were saying you did not get custody of the toaster as well. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so, so I've almost burnt down my house like four times. That's not true. That's not true at all. Just like <laughs> once. But also, the not true. It did not almost burn down. Just let the record show. Sarah almost burnt down her house a few days ago. By making macaroni and cheese, which is the best story ever. Well, that was different. That was just me being like, I was so tired. Yeah. And and I just fell asleep when the water was, when the stuff was already in there. I mean, I set it the happens. Alexa alarm too. You know, that's what my mom said too. I've literally never done that in my life. Yeah. And I was so like, oh my God, I, I was so hard on myself. Why do I do these right. things? Right, I'm sensing that even now. And I'm, I'm so like, hard. And my mom was like, We've all been there. Who cares? You're fi- Everything's fine. And I'm like, well, I don't know why it made me feel like... And then I was like, oh, well, that was like my worst case scenario of something happening and everything's fine. I think that was more it. I was anxious about... I'm anxious about fire-related stuff. And it, the idea that my, my, like, what if my house caught on fire? It's like, yeah. that was, that's freaking me out more, but it didn't, so I should be fine. This is probably a coincidence, but that happened to me one time as well, and it was right after I got a divorce. Oh, <gasps> no, it's how not a coincidence. It's because I'm telling you, it's yeah. remember how I was saying a few episodes ago that my embarrassing moments happen when I'm living in my head? Yeah. This is what's going on. It's like you're, I'm stressed about, you know, whatever. I got just, a, I got a bunch of like, you know, stuff going on right now yeah i'm handling it but the only thing i forget about yeah every once in a while you might burn some macaroni no big deal right you know so there was that and the other ones are because i don't have a toaster because (laughs) i keep wanting to make i like a bagel in the morning so sue me and uh (laughs) (laughs) nobody's judging you no i'm kidding that's just you know you know michael scott when he burns his foot (laughs) on the george foreman girl when he makes bacon and he goes i like the smell of bacon in the morning so sue me (laughs) (laughs) right um so i keep setting the toaster at like different i like to Trial and error. Maybe it's good at 350. Maybe it's good at on broil to try to get the perfect toast. It doesn't work. You just can't do it. You can't toast in the oven. Well, I can't because then I end up leaving. There's no, I don't know the time. Yeah. You should go ahead and Google that. (laughs) Or I'm going to go out today and I'm going to buy a GD toaster. Well, right. Or you could do that. (laughs) One or the other. I mean, I think I need that one. Uh, So I just got to get. You don't I've think never of all owned the a things. toaster toaster though. Oh really? What do you I've have? Only a toaster owned oven? A, yeah. Yeah, that's my whole life. Too. I've never had a toaster. And then when I saw you cuz don't you have a toaster? Yeah. Yeah, when I see people using them I'm like, "Huh. <laughs> I never had one of those. Is Sarah, it worth it?" Is well, it on principle a, or what? No, it's because we've always had a toaster oven, one of those little like but is why? there a reason? I don't know cuz that's just what I grew up with. Huh. So strange. We've, I know, but now, like, 
is there, what's the perk? Should I, do I need a convection oven? Do I need a toaster oven? What do you do when you need to reheat a French fries? I think most people would put those in the microwave or, Ugh. yeah. So they're uh, real good in a toaster oven. Is that what you're telling me? I mean, yes. how often are you reheating French fries though? Well, every time I eat French fries, because I'm never <laughs> eating food hot. I'm so ADD. I just, I, I, I can't remember the last time. Uh, well, actually, I can. Do we happen to have HelloFresh as a sponsor? Because I had a HelloFresh <laughs> meal a few nights ago that I ate and piping hot because it was so delicious. But uh, no, I can't remember the last time we had. I had like I actually ate the food as soon as I make it. It always ends up getting cold because I get distracted and do another project. It's real you bad. You have a funny habit of like you'll order to go, but then you go pick it up. Well, yeah. What do you mean? That's like, what you do. I think most people have it delivered these days. Well, like we always are talking about Postmates and stuff. And then I always find that you forget. And then you like just, I think it's because you're running around anyway. I am. And you take it home with you. That's totally it. I okay. am, I, I mean, I'm always on the you're go. Funny. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Crazy. I forget about that. There isn't a single day where I don't hit all of, like close my rings on my, you know, oh Apple God. Watch activity thing. And I, I could be in my own house and I'll still do it. Yeah. Yes. I always forget about this because I'm picturing you like leaving your house and going to get it and bringing no. it back. Okay. I would, I'm never even home. All right. Stop I'm, yelling at me. <laughs> I know. I had an ex who called me the Energizer Bunny. Yeah. I see and then that. another ex who called it, oh, she's in go mode. Yeah. You are. You I are. know. You and Landon's, one of Landon's up. biggest complaints was that I didn't eat the food right when he made it. Right, because you're doing other things. I should probably work on that. Are you one of those people that... How are you with exes? What's your deal? I mean, I'm good. Oh, like, I don't talk to them. I kind of... I've never kept in touch. Because I'm always like, whatever happened to so-and-so? And And you're like, I don't know. I have no... uh, Yeah, because I feel like what's... When I... Oh, gosh, this is going to sound harsh to my exes, but when when it's done, it's done. You know, there's not... There's not... I think I, this, the same, you know, it's, everything is almost like imagination, mm-hmm. you know, it sounds kind of silly to say it this way, but I imagine the kind of life that I was going to have with them and I paint, you know, the whole picture, which is why it can feel so intense or it does feel so intense when it ends. And it's so devastating because that image that I've created is so rich and is so like well thought out and developed. And then that kind of goes away. But once it goes away, I've put so much work and effort into creating it. I'm not going to put that time and effort into then creating it in my head again. I'm creating Mm. something new and different. So it's not, I don't have the feelings of like them as being part of that future that I've, new future I've envisioned for myself. Does that make sense? It does make sense. I'm not like that. So it's hard to understand, but I get it. And once the door, yeah, I'm pretty good at not looking in the rear view mirror in life in general. You're lucky. My God. That is a gift. Because too much, I feel like you miss the stuff in front of you. I mean, that Hmm. didn't mean to sound so like philosophical, but... Or yeah. like whatever, but that's totally what I feel and kind of how I've, and now that I, I say it, I've never really put, realized that that's how I am until this moment. Huh. Yeah. Cause that's you deep. will mention people from your past and I always want the follow up of where they are now Yeah, no idea. and you never know. And Unless I run into them in my pajamas in the <laughs> d- Home Depot for Maybe Christ's that's sake. That's, that, that probably is why. Oh, I gotta be better at like, I don't know, get my, I don't know. Changing out of stained sweatpants before I leave the house. <laughs> or not, well, whatevs, who cares? Live your life. No matter what you're wearing, you should give this new game a try. It is so fun, called Best Fiends. Mm-hmm. And it's an app uh, on your phone where you can do exciting puzzle games, which we freaking love. Duh. And you don't have to have the internet to play, which is great because Sarah plays Airplanes. all these games right on mm-hmm. when she travels. And now she mm-hmm. has my son playing these games. Oh my God. You're, excuse me, your son has <laughs> me playing these games. Let the record show. <laughs> this Best Fiends is a casual game for anyone to play. It's made for adults and you can spend as much time or as little time as you'd like in the game. And it's just a fun way to pass the time. It's challenging and 
you know, it's one of those things where it'll suck you right in and you're going to have so much fun doing it and you engage your brain with puzzles. It's like our show, but in a game form. I love, I give myself, back when I was in grad school, thank God I'm not doing that now, I used to give myself brain breaks with little yes. games. And this is perfect for a brain break where you can also still use your brain. Yes, that's such a good point. We yeah. all need little brain breaks. Engage your brain with fun puzzles and collect tons of cute characters. Five-star rated mobile puzzle game on the App Store, um, Apple, and Google Play. Download free on the Apple App Store or Google Play. That's friends without the R. Best Fiends. Um, hmm. And uh, you will love it. Best Fiends. Get to play in. Yeah, get to play in. Yeah. Uh, cool. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, so I had this sheet. Yeah. Let me read it to you. Okay. It was, I found it on my phone. I must have saved it from something. Oh. A predator's glossary of coded female disparagement. The words men use to undermine women oh, in the workplace. God. Oh. I thought this was fun. Because, yeah. like, oh, I love when fe- <laughs> We have different definitions of fun, but I'll... <laughs> oh, I, I have good fun sort of codifying the behavior of men oh my gosh <laughs> and being gosh. like oh here's the what they're doing now you can watch for it okay okay good that's a good spin on it i'm like yes. oh god it was just, i felt like the thing in the pit of my stomach again okay okay here we go big personality that's oh what they'll say. my <laughs> god <laughs> into it. this is what i get all the time yes right what do you think they mean when they say it to you in i'm your fucking case? annoying <laughs> It says that, frankly, you're a little too loud for their liking. There you go. Right? This is me. I live in this. Th- okay. Wow. It's- way to start. Way to kick it off like that, <laughs> Suze. Keep them coming. This just okay. became fun for me, too. Well, this one we all know. Bossy. Well, yeah. Constantly giving orders and following up on deadlines. Has a few more degrees than you and the nerve to occupy a higher oh. rung on the organizational chart. How dare she? How dare <sighs> she? Get back down there you belong ladies <laughs> the next one is cold which means you're mm. in a relationship and possibly a lesbian <laughs> oh my god sis this is so fun right? i thought this was gonna make me sad but i don't know why this <laughs> makes me so happy i love exposing their shitty behavior uh-huh and then i get to call it out because like yeah. i am when i'm in one of those moods I will totally be like, oh, do you mean she's in a relationship or you think she's a lesbian? Yeah, she's not attracted to you? Yeah, okay. oh, you mean she's not attracted to you? She won't give you a BJ? When- <laughs> <laughs> they will say we are critical, which means mm. that we demonstrate an, a tendency to ask follow-up questions. <laughs> oh, my God. Basically. Uh, you're no, difficult and it's to questioning with. their, it, you know, like going maybe they're not the ones who know all the answers and that they feel challenged by that. So well, of course. And if you're asking things of them, then you're critical of them. It's not just that you're curious or want some more information. You're, they feel it's, oh, you're criticizing personally them. attacked. Uh-huh. Yeah. Goodness gracious. Difficult to work with. For some reason, uh, we don't tolerate being interrupted. Sometimes we express <laughs> ourselves without regard for the self-esteem of our male interlopers. Uh-huh. Uh, flighty. Uh, once changed her mind. <laughs> <laughs> Hard to oh, read. Who wrote this? It's by Emma Carmichael. Emma Carmichael is funny. She would be a brain candy brainiac. <laughs> Emma, if you're listening. Send her a pin. We love, we love you. Hard to read. After showing what appeared to be fleeting interest in your uh-huh. advances, oddly and abruptly said she had to go home. Never talks about her sexual history, despite repeated oh prodding, God. but now seems to have significant other probably a lesbian oh my god this is great that's hilarious i mean and it's just true i mean i've heard most of these about uh-huh. myself the first I, one is like i get that oh she has a big person now i this is oh my god what that's about, exactly what that is and now i'm so pissed because we're mad. in my mind i like took it as a compliment right so well oh, right yeah. well what do you think about this one work wife i don't like that I don't like that phrase at all. Yeah. I hate it, in fact. This says it says it's you are amenable to daily flirtation and collegial banter. Once caught her typing, ugh, he's here again in G chat window, but she was probably talking about someone else. So basically Oh my god, that's great. Anybody who does it is the Yeah, I get it. I mean, we all know these women that are like work wives. 
And like sometimes it is really just cute and fun. But sometimes it's like, hmm. Here's why I don't like that. Because the, rarely, even when you say work husband, that mm-hmm. doesn't sound right. What it is, is it's saying that, to me, what it sounds like, is it's a female that's at the male's disposal to like... Stroke it, their ego. Ca- yes, or catering to the male in these specific ways. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I am not a fan. I may have some personal feelings about this that are coming out <laughs> a little strong that I can't help. But yeah. yeah, I'm not big into that phrase at all. Yeah, I'm not I think we could get rid of that. Because it's just like like you can I don't know, flirt like I don't flirt with a girl or work, whatever. That's fine, but the phrase I just feel like it takes like she's meeting his needs. Yes, that's mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. And because that's how the male sees it. He's, I would love to say, why is she your work wife? Yes. What are, the, what are the attributes that remind you of your wife that are similar in these two scenarios? Yeah. And I guarantee you they're rarely in a position. They wouldn't answer anything like building. The, it, it wouldn't be what you'd want a husband to say about a wife. It's funny though, because I know people that engage in that, and they seem really nice, and I get it. But like, I, I would be curious. I'd be curious to see what somebody who says, "Oh yeah, that's my work wife." Like, what are the, what are the, what? And maybe it's different for everybody. But yeah. tell me what those characteristics are that they share that where you know they overlap. Well, because it's only married people do it. Right. Like a single person would never say, oh, that's my work wife. Right. Because they would be banging. Yeah. So it implies that you already have one, but you're replacing her when you're at work, kind of. I don't like it. <laughs> Sarah doesn't like it, you guys. I'll put, I'll put that on my Tinder profile. She doesn't like it. Don't use the word work wife. Ain't nobody got no work wife. There Hate you go. It. No. Uh-uh. Sarah sent me a picture of um, the fella that she met on Tinder Mm-hmm. I approve. Mm-hmm. He's a handsome Susie fella. approved. Susie approved. Yeah. That's the first of many, too. Hopefully. Okay. Yeah. God hopefully. willing. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. Let's see. You know, we've talked about this before, but like, uh, I really rely on you and your expertise to explain the ways that the human brain is so fucked up sometimes. Well, Linda. I love being asked about it. So so there was a Florida man. You know, yeah. we're Ooh. about to hear some crazy. I know. Crazy. God, everything. <laughs> And I don't okay. want to like call out people in Florida, but all weird stories come from there. And also, you guys are terrible drivers. <laughs> but she doesn't want to call you out. Uh, just so you know. Okay. Well, there was I mean, a you're Florida. You're great humans, though. <laughs> yeah. There's. I love sure. you. They're quirky, though. It's not your driving. Florida man was arrested after a botched home castration <gasps> that he performed on someone. Oh! oh! I don't even have. A penis, and I'm feeling, I'm feeling like alien Violated. penis pain. Yeah, pain. yeah. Like phantom. I have, like yes, phantom penis pain right now. Whoa, whoa! Tell me how this happened. Who well, signs up for this shit? I'll tell you who, and this is what you're going to have to explain to me. People oh with a eunuch fetish. I don't know what that is. A eunuch. Oh, is- <laughs> yes. The men in back in like the medieval times where they would cut it off and yeah. they would just. And there are men who okay. meet in these chat okay. rooms or whatever, and they're all into it. And this is, and no. fun, this isn't funny, but the crazy part is that they had tried it previously, but they had to cut it, sh- cut it short. <laughs> oh, stop being hilarious. <laughs> I didn't mean to. They had to. Uh, You're so ab- good for those Freudian slips. They had to abort mission because oh my God. The, one, the guy that was getting it chopped off, um, he ejaculated oh okay yeah so please explain okay uh so my this is i am let me wait be before, per- you do, before you do, <laughs> maybe you should take a minute and think about it and i will take a minute and tell you about something that will help you if you have high credit card balances um and you want to lower your interest rate the answer is lightstream Lightstream is a credit card consolidation loan 
where you can get a rate as low as 5.95% APR with auto pay. They have an online application that's super easy. There's no fees and you get your money as soon as the day you apply. Um, and just for our listeners, apply now and you'll get a special interest rate discount. The only way to get this discount is to go to lightstream.com slash brain candy, L I G H T S T R E A M dot com slash brain candy, subject to credit approval. Rate includes 0.50% auto pay discount. Terms and conditions apply, and other offers are subject to change without notice. Visit lightstream.com slash brain candy for more information. Did you have time to think about it? Yeah. Well, I mean, first of all, yeah. Uh, everybody has different things that, and <sighs> people don't just, you know, wake up and this is how they, it is, you know, things get learned and, and they get, I would say, and this, let me be also perfectly clear. I am not saying this is a professional in any, this is my this opinion. Is just this is Sarah Riggs. No letters <laughs> behind her name. <laughs> yeah. So, just what your I, sense is as a person. Yes. My sense as a person is that they experienced, these males experienced heavy, heavy shame at an age where they were learning about their body. And they had an adult figure who either sexually abused them or shamed them for, like, I think that you can almost think of say you have a, like a perfect storm for it. Say you have a female who was a victim of rape and she gets pregnant and she has a baby and she did not ever, and we're talking this happened 60 years ago, whatever. Mm -hmm. And she then has this baby and shames, and I'm not, of course, this is, this is just a like, one scenario. This is not everything that always happens. Like I want to be really clear when I'm saying this, that I'm not making any, like, this is not something that happens all the time, but I can see how this could happen. And then she is so angry about that and takes out that anger on that child in some way or is abusive. And she came from an abusive home and that gets passed down. And so this this man internalizes so much feeling of hate and shame around the penis and feels like the only way to feel like himself is if it's gone or when that shame is, it's like a relief for him in some way because he feels deserving of that. And I can see how that can become fixed in there. Do you kind of get it? Get that? See that? Kind of. The part that I really don't get, I mean, it's hard to understand any of that, but... The part I really don't get is how that shame and uh, what I don't know if you call it self loathing or what, but then gets somehow crossed with sexual gratification. Well, that's the part of it feeling like a relief. It feels like they're deserving of it. I would almost say, uh, now, this is again. I don't. This is my just my feeling and my right. interpretation. I can't stress that enough. We know you're enough. not an expert on. I know. Mix. God, right. I'm just like I just want. I don't know. Thinking Why of would like, they seek this out though and get it? Like, it's ugh. the same way cutting brings relief. Yeah. And it all, it feels like. But are women a having orgasms of, over that? But but if you if I think it's like anything that if you build up a desensitization to something for a certain amount that that and then like i said it's like a perfect storm this is a very rare thing very right, very because right, it's right, not right. happening all the time this is like so rare but there are scenarios where there are perfect storms of trauma abuse yeah. the right age you know freud was off in a lot of things but he was right in some in how we you know, the different times where we develop like the phallic and anal and oral stages, like Mm -hmm. when we experience certain traumas at those stages, we can experience symptoms related to that like kind of area later in life. Like they say people who had trauma when they were learning how to control their bowels are often either anal retentive, like really tightly wound and they hold Mm -hmm. everything in and they like Mm -hmm. have stomach issues and constipation and all that because they never were allowed to just like in a way release. And this is something that, you know, it, it, I, and like you see it, 
out there. Do you think that after they accomplish it, they finish the surgery? No, it's never none. There's not. It's I don't. Then it's, what? I think that they. It's. I would. <laughs> I think that that is, is. They're acting out. This is like acting out as like a symptom. I think yeah, that so the then underlying feel root happy? thing is. I don't think so. I think oh. it's almost a form of like body dysmorphia. Yeah. I think that what they're trying to do is fix a feeling, and you can't fix a feeling with yeah. something external Ooh, or something deep. like that. Okay, I think now what we're they talking. Would really, I think it's the same as people who, um, you know, I watched this really great Vice documentary about. I think it was, I can't remember what it was called, but it was about a guy who was living his life like as a unicorn or something crazy like that. Okay. And at first you think like, oh, wow, he's this free spirit and look at that. And then you really pull back the layers and you realize there's so much depression. There's so much identity issues. There's so much of not being accepted for who he is. And he's used this like grandiose like personality and all these persona these, yes this persona and this way to like decorate himself where he's really hiding who he like who he truly is from the outside world mm-hmm. and he needed to work on that and then he just kept on it, it's it i mean everything always comes down to identity like who am i am i accepted for and loved for who i am so i think that this falls into that category of like body dysmorphia but then with the sexual element i think that that has to do with maybe the timing in which this became like a fetish for them and how that lined up or who introduced it to them Ugh. you know i know that they say there's nothing new under the sun and that there is whatever crazy thing you can think of somebody's into it or has done it Mm -hmm. but there are moments where you just think this can't be because if but you, it is. It's it's hard for like any time I've seen any, and I just low. I go. These are the kind of documentaries and kind of like you know little human interest. I don't know if what you would call that. I'm more like interest in human stories. Yeah. Um, uh, like Vice does a lot of them, and so I've and I've watched a lot of those. And uh, who else does it? Um, oh my gosh, who who did Jennifer Aniston marry? Oh. Uh, who did Jennifer Aniston marry? Justin Theroux. Who's his cousin who does the documentaries? Louis Theroux. Thank you. Kim. <laughs> yes. I knew it get a long way around. We the got there. there. We, got, we there. got there. Thank you. Oh, that was fun. <laughs> that should be like a game show. We could totally crush that. Um, <laughs> so he does a lot of those documentaries. And I could see what it always comes down to in the end is that they're suffering from identity issues, not feeling accepted, a sense mm-hmm. of low self-worth and have depression. Yeah. And so if we just go in and work on that instead, then I, I think a lot of these are symptoms of that. Now I'm not saying it, like somebody should not, you know, enjoy like dressing up as a unicorn and all that. But when that becomes your identity and you don't, I, you know, it's it, it's worth exploring deeper and and looking at you know what is this person does this person feel accepted when they look at themselves in the mirror? Do they feel worthy of love? Do they feel worthy of? And I would imagine for these guys who are going to these lengths, the answer is no, and they think that it's going to be taken care of through something like this. But I I I would really put my money on they're still going to feel something missing well, now figuratively and literally uh, <laughs> that was not supposed to be a joke when they're done my god you're right oh it's a lot i mean yeah. so when i write to the prisoners this is fascinating to me and i love the ability to talk about this right uh, in, it is in a place. endlessly like, interesting. i could talk about this for forever really and explore yeah, I think the reason that you behavior? enjoy it is the same reason I do, which is that when, I, like, through speaking to the murderers and criminals and people that society sees as deviant, yes, um, there it's similar to the eunuch story in the sense that, like, I can't relate to what they've done. Mm-hmm. I I can't imagine doing these terrible things or cutting off somebody's privates or whatever, mm-hmm. but. 
that's just the manifestation of Correct. something I can relate to, yes. which is pain and yes. feeling like you're not enough and experiencing mm. trauma. That's the part. Like if you can get past the yes. stuff, you're like, I don't get it. Then you reach the part where you're like, oh, I do get it. Totally. Yeah. And we all have things that a people, other people would be like, well, I don't get it. Yeah, we do. We really do. If <laughs> like, you come on. That's, and I think I'm so in, I'm just so passionate about helping people feel that acceptance. And yeah. even if I had a client who said that, all right, let's work on that. No worries. This is like, I always say that like no judgment zone, like I am the no judgment zone for that. There really is none. I can have like a strong reaction on a podcast, of course, and like feelings and everything, but I can understand at a deep level how anybody would get to any decision they make because everybody's just trying to do the best that they can. And we're all just victims of our circumstances and environment and sometimes things that are far beyond our control. And we have limited tools. And how on earth can we expect people to survive and thrive when we're like, here you go, you fix the whole world, and all you have is that IKEA tool that they give you in the box? <laughs> right, the Alan. That's Ridge, not going to work. <laughs> Well, one way that we can help the world is to teach our kids how to be uh, smart, independent thinkers who um, love science, technology, engineering, art, and math. And one way you can do that is through the KiwiCo subscription box for kids. So cool. So cool. I love watching the things that you make. And sometimes the photos, you look more into it than Lincoln does. I mean, he looks into it, but you look thrilled. I really enjoy it. We got another box that was... um, you make your own claw machine. Oh my gosh! Adorable. Oh, your kid and yeah. claw machines. Don't get me started. I know he loves this them. box. Will be way cheaper than what I <laughs> shelled out at the fair when he kept wanting to t- try because he kept losing. It's such a clever uh, project, and it involves you know making the little claw, and then you make these yarn balls that then you try to grab. It's really, really cute. Oh my God, that's so cute. You can do it together, or you can just give it to your kids for them to pass the time when they say they're bored, which they always do. They have uh, boxes from kids from zero all the way up to 16 plus. KiwiCo is a convenient, affordable way to encourage your children to be anything they want to be. There's no commitment. You can cancel any time. Monthly options start at $19.95 per month, including shipping. For our listeners, go to kiwico.com slash brain candy to get your first month for free. Every day counts when it comes to making a difference, so don't miss out on the amazing opportunity. Again, go to kiwico.com slash brain candy. Get your first month free. That's kiwico.com slash brain candy. So I got a kind of a philosophical question for you. Okay. My aunt sent me this um, this article a while back that she in some magazine that was uh, about one of the writers from the show the a good the good place you know that yeah. show yeah. that was talking about um, uh, she she worked she's a UCLA like philosophy professor and she worked as a consultant on the show and the show is all about like you know, heaven and hell or the afterlife or whatever. Yeah. But on the show, they dealt with the trolley problem. You know the trolley problem? No. The trolley scenario? I do not. So, okay, so let me read this to you because I would love to hear what you would say. So picture this. You see a train steaming straight towards five people who are tied to the track. By your side, there's a lever that can divert the speeding train onto another track. However, on the second track, there's oh, yeah, one person yeah. tied up. Would you pull the lever and actively kill someone to save the lives of five other people? Yeah, right. I did. I have heard this dilemma. What would you do? Yeah, I got to save more people. You got so sixty six percent of people in this in in a recent study. They gathered up like researchers took two hundred people and they did this, but they first asked them to do it in a hypothetical. um, So this is how it was a little bit different in this one, which I thought was interesting. They first asked him to do it hypothetically, just like the story that I read to you. And 66% of people would press the button and like, be like, we'll kill just the one. Yeah. Yeah. So then the researchers would like, would they do this in real life though? Cause like hypothetically. In this hypothetical, do we know for sure that it's like all the people on the train die? die? Yeah. No, we don't. Oh. Right. That's it. It could. That I think that's how that's how it goes. Is like you well, don't know. It I could would, crash. 
and but they could all die. Oh man! Right. So okay. it's like w- kill one to save, definitely save five, or let one live and then maybe kill three. Maybe it gets in an uh, accident. Maybe kill two. Maybe they all. What's okay. you know? What do you do? So these scientists used mice, which I first of all thought oh was pretty God. fucked up. And they they were like, when the chips were down and the real mice were in front of them, 84% of people chose to press the button and actively zap the one mouse. Hmm. So when it really came down to it, most people would just kill that one person. I'm surprised. I thought you were going to say the opposite. I know. That's why the study was so interesting because that's what you think. You think you wouldn't do it. Yeah. But then I wonder, like, so, and they were interested in researching this too because of, uh, uh, self-driving cars that maybe this is a scenario mm. that may actually come up and like do and should we, we to train pick. yes and should we train a computer to make that decision based on what the majority of the population like you know right it, this is a real dilemma because and right. this is kind of along the same lines of how you know most people say oh God, that the yeah, golden rule is sort of the litmus test for morality mm-hmm, the golden mm-hmm. rule crosses all religions etc yeah. but i we've talked about this before oh, that point. it's not always clear because good point you know let's say you let someone out in traffic well then you've been kind to that person but you screwed the people behind you so right it, it's hard to know what the correct yeah. answer is in the ethical this world. uh this article said for example if someone ran into the road should a driverless car swerve out of their way causing a massive pile up right. of multiple cars and potentially killing the driver and passenger or just actively decide to carry on hit the pedestrian in the road <laughs> right. like that i don't know this is yeah. the, and it says of course there's no correct answer but and why it made for such a good like people love that show the good place because it it and it said, the end of the article that my aunt sent me said, as it turns out, this is sitcom gold, like to yeah. wrestle with these big philosophical questions. And I think what a good idea to have a philosopher. Uh, what's happening? Are we like uh, dump trucks uh, in the background? Where? Do you hear beeping? No. Wow, I do. Real loud. Well, it's okay. Oh, that's fun. Okay, well, that'll just be a nice little sound for us to share in the background, anybody who hears that. Um, so, yeah, so now I don't remember what I was saying. Oh, Just no. you said it's good that they have a philosopher working. Oh, yeah, oh, I thought that was really interesting that they used a philosopher to be a consultant on a TV show. And I like that, um, you know, now if only those reality TV shows can wise up and use a therapist as a consultant on there. Yes, Sarah. Don't, I oh, keep thinking about you this. You know what? You just kind of gave me an idea for another job. I did? Well, I don't know. This did. Why, <laughs> why wouldn't they need therapist consulting on uh, other things where there's Well, yeah, that's how that... On... Um, well, I guess Lori Gottlieb, she kind of does that, or at least she used to be a consultant. Maybe she did that before she was a therapist. But mm. yeah, it seems like definitely... Oh, right, right, right. Yes. Ah, fun. Yeah, get yourself an agent. I should. I how mean, funny, an agent to be a therapist. For real. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Oh, I heard this is like something I would actually talk to you about in real life, but I'll mm. just do it now because it's on my mind. Yeah, right. I was it's reading one of those about these, uh, this therapist that hosts, um, I guess it's like a one day conference for first responders. <gasps> and I think she does it so that then they become her clients. Like it's a way of outreach and getting more oh, clients. Oh, you're so smart, Suze. Well, this is so like, you know, what do we call it? Uh, serendipitous or what's the word? Synchronicity, like all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Because I was just yesterday having a conversation with my friend Dave telling him because he's a first responder. And I was saying, um, can you please get me in so that I can do this? Because I really want to work with yeah. that population. And mm-hmm. I just asked him this yesterday. See, I think that's part of your future. I, I think you're right. Yeah. Oh my God, I totally think you're right, Suze. And maybe that Willie Nelson fortune was right about that too. Because they, I think armed forces almost falls into the same category. You know what? I, Willie I do work real close right. to Camp Pendleton. See? I, I am real close. Oh my God, I love this. This is totally like a not podcast combo, Absolutely. but welcome to our world, people. <laughs> this is what we talk about. Willie Nelson and I are your life coach. That's right. I mean, that's really all I need. 
That's all anyone needs. Remember when, we, when Adam brought up to me, I think it was either Adam or you, who brought up to me the hilarious uh, uh, item at the Willie Nelson Museum that was the pot holder that yes. was in the shape of a pot leaf? I should have bought that. That was I'm funny. I'm really mad that I didn't buy that thing. That was real funny. So good. I just um, like a good pun. <laughs> Pot holder, get it? Yes, I it took me a sec too, and then I laughed a lot, which is like my favorite kind. It probably um, took me a sec because of the pot. I want to tell you a, a study about sex appeal. Oh, um, lay it and on about me about how it. You would think like attraction and sex appeal would just be here's my type. This is what I'm into. But mm. study found something different. So first, let's <gasps> talk about something else that's sexy, which are Rothy's shoes. Yes. They come in four different styles. I wear the sneakers. Sarah has the point. They have loafers, really cool, playful designs, tons of colors to choose from if you want to look polished and professional, also comfortable, right? Yes, please. When you're walking around... You want to be stylish, but you don't want to have blisters. And so Rothy's are the perfect flats for life on the go. And they're made from recycled plastic water bottles. Come on. I wonder what they're up to. Because remember last time when I yeah. told you how many millions it was? Yes. You were like shocked. It was like something insane. million water bottles. Jeez. It's so cool. Check so out cool. all their amazing styles available right now at rothys.com slash brain candy. Go to rothys.com. That's R-O-T-H-Y-S dot com slash brain candy to get your new favorite flats. Comfort style, sustainability. There are the shoes you've been waiting for. Head to rothys.com slash brain candy today and they have them for women and girls. Um, okay, so the study said yeah. that if you're looking to hook up, you're... Which I am. Right. <laughs> Go on. Your preferences will be different than if you're looking for like a long-term thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. So like facial scars, Mm. women are into for short term. Well, I know what this is. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. And women find men more attractive when, um, Oh, this is another thing. Women find men more attractive when the woman is eating something spicy, too. Women? Wait. Whoa, whoa. Women find men more attractive when they're eating something spicy. Oh, that's the transfer of arousal thing. So if you're eating something spicy and you're on a date, you think the guy across from you is sexier. This is totally transfer of arousal because our bodies, it's the exact same thing as as being excited on a first date and going skydiving. Any form of arousal. This, See, we could trick our brains to do freaking anything. We're so much more powerful. No, it should make you excited because we have all that power. We just have to learn how to harness it. Remember I was saying it's like having one tool? That's like having... We're like getting a level and a power saw and a wrench. This is, those are all good tools that you can use to find, because that's it, man. Oh, I love this. And as and then, somebody who's going to be going on first dates, I'm yeah. going to be like, we're going to be going skydiving then to Mexican food. How do you feel? Funnily enough, though, the women looking for long term tend to like men with beards, and the guy that you send a picture of had a beard. So maybe. Oh, that's interesting. I was also listening to NPR, and they were talking about a study where children found men with the beards the least trusting. <laughs> Wonder why? Yeah, they had to choose, like, whether. It was like this little, they set up a little scenario where they would like go on an adventure quest and meet people along the way. And then they had to rank like who they would tr- trust to like take them down each path. And the ones with the beards were, I think it has something to do with children learning how to read faces and expressions yeah. and a beard hiding that. Yeah, that makes sense. But I just thought that was interesting that children find, <laughs> women find them very attractive and children find them scary. very scary. I guess that makes sense. Which makes no sense with Santa, and but oh, also yeah. sense with just why they get scared on his lap. Oh my God, that is the worst. So like none of this was in the article. I've just added all that. Uh, and then, <laughs> the Santa Claus. The Santa bit. The, yes, the Santa Claus. <laughs> oh God, we're good. Okay, so yes, back to our, tell me what else. Well, and this is obvious, but it just said that having one drink makes you more attractive to, your part, to whoever you're out with, but more than that, less so. Got it. Yeah, so that's good. One. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be like. Well, this is a. 
a lot of my, some, well, not all of my, but I got really good advice that has all been very helpful. Well, I mean, it got me married once uh, it, from the show Millionaire Matchmaker. What did you learn? To drink minimum. Minimum? Uh, to, or maximum. Okay. That two, I'm, I'm thinking clubs at the comedy clubs. Two yeah. drinks, ma- two drink maximum. And you're so funny. Minimum. No, <laughs> two drink maximum. No sex before monogamy and whoa, whoa, no moving whoa, in whoa. until. Well, that's like if you want long term commitment. And I totally why? agree. With that. I agree. I'm, I'm for that. Tell me why. Oh, I just think that you don't have a lot of opportunities to enjoy. It's all, it almost like this is going to sound like a silly analogy, but it's like when you see a little kid that wants to grow up too fast and you're like, no, no, you're missing the best part, which is like the mm. childhood and like enjoy every moment and the youth is wasted on the young. Like it feels kind of like w- you only get this one magical time in your relationship to have those feelings of longing and desire and like built up, you know, uh, uh, anticipation of all that fun stuff. And like the kisses mean so much because you haven't had all the other stuff and you're just like longing for it. And why not stretch that out? And really, I think when you do, it builds up the, you're almost building a, like in a way, a chemical addiction to that person because Mm. those feelings give you all those good cortis, all that good, you know, Whoa, gosh, I'm getting all choked up thinking about it. Woo. Um, all that good, you know, all that good stuff that's going on. So I like building that up. I think that's like the exciting moments. But if the person isn't something that I'm interested, somebody that I'm interested in like long term or I'm like not in a place where I just would like to go out and have some physical fun, then I, you can almost manufacture that by going to the physical places real fast. Oh, wow. So it's like, would you like a slow drip or would you just like a... a we're going to rocket ship to get there, but the ride's going to be short versus the long ride. Are we sure though? Yeah, for me, I am. The other one I agree on is no cohabitation before marriage or engagement. Why? I just think it's be- I think in, in the long term, it's better if you just save that, you know, for, I don't know. I just, I think mean, I agree. For but me, I'm for just me, curious. Yeah. And, and statistically, like looking at like studies on, on marital success and happy marriages and things like that, that's what it shows. Yeah. I've always been a real fast marrier. So yeah, yeah. I don't really relate to like, let's move in and like see what happens. Right. Yeah. I'm not, because what it does is it is better for the woman or it's, a better yeah. situation for the man and a worse situation for the woman. Right. That's what it always says because we gain, it's just like everybody who's married said, oh, I got a third child or I got another, you know, I got a second child because they, it becomes a, ben- we become a, a benefit to their lives, but often we, it can add some chores for us. Yeah, right. So, we don't but, for that. And women get excited about it because it, in our minds, we think it's going to propel the relationship forward to the next step, where for men, it can often be almost the other. They're looking at it as a trial run, and we're looking at it as a step towards commitment. We have different in, like uh, uh, um, intentions, sort of. Mm-hmm. In- I had a friend who had this policy, and she said that she refused to take a shower in someone's shit cloud until he Correct. proposed and Correct. they were <laughs> going to get married. I refuse to take one, period. <laughs> right. So like in that, don't, and we'll have a separate bathroom for that, police, but, which is well, a privileged true. thing to say. I or check that. Um, also, <laughs> what else was I going to say about that that is important? Yeah. Just moving in before. Yeah. I just think it's funny how... Yeah, Attra- attraction. My mind went to shit cloud, and now I can't see anything I'm sorry. else. I'm like, it's okay. It's a good visual. It's a good. She's she ain't wrong, man. Nobody wants that. Um, I do. I just think it's weird though that you, when I think of attraction, I think of it as fixed. You know, this is what I'm into, mm-hmm. and I was intrigued to find out that might not be exactly right. Oh, it depends I, on that year. It's the, uh, and why I said, oh, I know what this is in the beginning is because I have heard of this. I think, I don't know if my friend came up with this or this is actually a thing, but she called it the Clooney Cusack situation. What? So 
if you look at movies, especially in like the ni- you know early 2000s and 90s, whatever, that it would cycle through there being a really powerful, handsome, like burly, like male lead that's like so sexy, and he's like dreamy and could get any every guy wants to be him and every girl wants to be with him. And we would have those movies come out for a little bit. And then it's like, oh, we're tired of that. And then all of a sudden, John Cusack would come out. And he's like the nerdy guy who's like soft and sensitive, but he's going to do anything for you. And then we want that. And then it cycles through. And we're like, oh, we're sick of that because he's like, "Mm, you know, we want that. And then it goes back around. And I've also heard that women in their cycles are attracted to different kinds of men. Oh, yeah, that's true. That you're attracted to bad boys went at one time with the scars and all that and the beard and da 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 and then you're attracted to the nurturer who's going to be the caretaker and and be like you know take care of you and your offspring at other times i can't remember which is which but because we're all run by do you remember that woman who was on the podcast a long time ago wrote the great book about motorcycle riding a motorcycle yes after menopause yes she is freaking Dead. You're so good at remembering their names. That's <laughs> I, I love that shows how much you respect their work, and Aww, that's just thanks. great that you do that. You're a wonderful human. Uh, <laughs> so that really just sh- and she's right. We are run by our hormones, and we are like, who the hell are we? Until they're they're out of there, and we just we're saw, different attractions. Come on. I just saw a headline that said, are, "Am I my hormones?" Yes. I didn't read the article, but now I wish I had because you're making the same point. Correct, and you can see it. This was my neuropsychology class one, day one, one of my favorite classes I ever took. She was so good. See, I can't even remember that professor's name right now. And she was like my favorite one. Um, Missed the final, still got an A. Just saying. (laughs) Um, That's how well I did. Uh, So she told us about the roosters who had the the little, like they had their... uh, If you remove the testes from a rooster, he will stop crowing. His little waddle thing, like the little red thing that hangs down, that's like their, basically like their dick in a way, or their, like, it basically, it's like their sex organ that's on display, I guess you could say. But that thing shrinks. And I'm not saying the penis, that I'm not in any way saying penis would shrink if you remove testes. But that happens in, (laughs) I just want to be very clear because people are going to be like, ah, she doesn't know a thing. But no, so for roosters, that goes away. They stop all of their male sexual behaviors and they're essentially, in rooster terms, a different personality. Yeah. And that's just because you took them away. So then you think about Anybody who has hormone, you think of all the hormones in the food. I understand that they're different hormones, but yeah, anything yeah, yeah. that affects our that, that system, our chemistry, mm-hmm. me- w- medication we're taking, birth control. Like I've even heard that you are more attracted to people who are genetically closer to you while you're on birth control. Yeah, that's so weird. I know. <laughs> because it's really your brain saying, I wonder what that is. Mm-hmm. Ugh. Yeah, that's what I don't like. It freaks me out because it feels like we're just God. at the mercy of our insides. I gotta have my friend John on here. He's a specialist in like neuropsychology. The guy is a, a walking textbook, and he would just be able to answer every one of these questions. We and should more. have him on speed dial and call. No, him, like, for every real. Episode. I should be like John. What is this? We don't and get he'll it. Be like, oh, uh, he helped me write all my stuff for the lectures I do, talking about yeah. PTSD and everything. He helped me with that. Shout out to John. If he's Shout ever out listening. to John. Yeah. Uh, here's a freaky story to fi- to wrap up the show. Ooh, yeah, this is one of my favorite episodes. Oh my PS. god! Sarah's I don't know why. I just love this one. I hope you guys do too. Sarah suddenly has a eunuch fetish. St- get out. Um. Okay. <laughs> get out. Uh, there was a fella. You might have seen the headline who found in his mother's freezer a oh, no. dead baby. Oh, I did see this. Yes. Can and you he, tell me that more about this? He reported it to the police and believes that this was oh my uh, God, his sister right. that he didn't know he had who oh must have died either stillborn or oh my you know, God. very young. And the mom put it in the freezer. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. See, what would those- you do? If I found it, yes, instantly take her to the hospital and get her Aww. help. 
instantly because this shows because that's what I oh my god this breaks my heart because what this this is is and come. I mean, we look at the person. You have to not just look at the action. You have to look at like where, like I said, everybody's doing is just doing everything. They have like the, they're just trying the best they can. And this is a woman who clearly had something so devastating happen. Had zero support, a no support system that could help. Nothing where she was like okay. Even could had definite hormone stuff going on where it triggered depression and postpartum and all this. And now she has it. That that is an act of pure desperation and a dark, sad moment and a woman who is probably severely dealing with stuff. When he had seen this white cardboard box in his mom's freezer his whole life. Oh, I was going to say, and what kind of person ha- like never cleans out their refrigerator? Their f- when freezer? he said he thought it was like a cake topper or another, right. like a memento that you put in there. Oh, this is heartbreaking. Right? And like... She wasn't you- married, was she? Not that I know of. Yeah, I could imagine. She's, I know, and I would imagine she has hoarding tendencies. I can already see it. Is your a hundred percent has hoarding tendencies? Look this up. Oh my god, I have to know. Guaranteed. Do you think that the mom? I know I'm right. Did something terrible to the baby though? No. Why? No, I don't. I think it was stillborn, and I think she didn't know what to do. And I think the pain, the loss of that was so severe, and she couldn't bring herself to ever getting rid of it because it would feel like really letting it go. And she wasn't ready to do that and didn't have... I, this is in no way legal or right or okay, but I think this definitely falls into severe mental uh, uh, distress. And she was not acting on... In, in like a, It's just... And it became like... Then at what point do you... There's never a time... Like once it gets so far, what is a good time to, 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 to f- turn that in? Mm-hmm. When do you do that? You can never dispose of it because then that would be she'd have to revisit that yeah. pain all over again. Well, and she may even or okay, <laughs> I have another thing. Or. or there was something that she didn't. Maybe she didn't tell anyone she was pregnant. Maybe something happened where she didn't take. Maybe it was in in no way like her fault because I can't. I don't want to ever say that, but. She in some way feels responsible and then has to use this yeah. as a reminder and continuously punish herself for it Be- and every time she looked in their freezer. Oh, I have he to know that, all like, about this. He said that he's looking this. back on his life and he remembers a time when he was seven or eight when his mom was upset and all she told him was, my firstborn Jennifer would have been 21 years old today oh, and God. he believes the infant in the freezer could be Jennifer. If yes. so, that would mean the infant died about 50 years ago. So oh, sad and crazy. Yeah. Not as crazy as a eunuch fetish, but... I Well, and both of those just come down to people who just didn't have... You know, it really is why, like, we need to see other people and why people need connection because people need somebody to help them through that nobody can do this alone. It's too hard. coping, right. Coping, yeah. It's too hard. And we need to be able to support... You know, and not turn our back on these. Well, I believe you just can't. You have to like reach out with open arms to the people who maybe are the most closed off. Because these yeah. just both stories. Oh God, that makes me want to cry. Yeah. Oh, that breaks my heart. When I bet she was living a life that otherwise seemed, you know, unremarkable. I would also imagine, in a way, that she she has a job. God, in my mind, she has a job where she's like works at a daycare or like is like a child care like. I can see her doing something where she's positioned herself around children. Oh, Lord. I can just see this. I don't know. That's my feeling. Who knows? But not because she wants to hurt them, because she is so sad about what she didn't have or what she's lost and she's got to... That's my guess. Who knows? Well, now that guy's got to deal with it because he's got to... Because now that'll change how he sees his whole life. Correct. Because it reframes your experiences. It sure does. But Ooh. creepy, creepy. Anyway, yeah, that's all for good today. stories, Suze. One of your favorites. A she plus, said. definitely <laughs> worth five star review. Yes, five star review. Don't forget to subscribe. We love you guys so much. Thank you so yes, much for listening. Until next time. Bye. Bye. This podcast.
podcast is brought to you by Wave Podcast Network. Check out all of our shows, including the Brain Candy Podcast, I Don't Get It, Coffee Convos, and Let's Talk About It. 